Most of us have a cell phone within reach all day. And when we need to call 911, 80% of us use this. Hi, I'm Bruce Gordon with the Minnesota Department of Public Safety. These phones have limitations when it comes to 911, and DPS wants to help consumers better understand what information the phones do and do not provide to 911 dispatchers. Joining me today is Jackie Mine. She is the director of the Emergency Communication Networks Division here at DPS. That division oversees Minnesota's 911 program. Jackie, can you help us understand the difference between a landline and a cell phone when making 911 calls? A landline will give specific information about where you're located. It will give the house number or your suite number or your apartment number. A cell phone right now won't be able to give you that level of detail. Now, Jackie, what, what should consumers do when making a 911 call from a wireless phone, assuming they're in a, in a position to talk? Well, hopefully, if they are in a position to talk, you should identify any landmarks. If you do know your address, give it. So dispatchers are trained to ask many questions during any 911 call. During a wireless call, they are especially uh, concerned about making sure that what they're seeing in terms of the location information on a map in front of them is actually the uh, correct address. So they will verify any of that information and then they will also continually go back and check to see if there's additional location information during the uh, time that they're talking to you. Now Jackie, I, got, I have to imagine that there are probably some specific challenges when uh, you're calling from indoors on a wireless phone. Is that correct? That is correct. Today's technology, the wireless carrier does not have uh, the ability to send um, for example, if you're on a multiple floor, so if you're on the 10th floor of a building, they would not be able to tell us that you're on the 10th floor of the building. Um, Multi-building locations can be a challenge, and that is something that the FCC is attempting to uh, address by setting a set of milestones for carriers over the next six years to be able to provide that information. What about VoIP phones? What are they? What kind of challenges do they provide for 911 dispatchers? So VoIP phones um, are not necessarily associated with, say, a hard wire in your house. Um, you, might be, uh, you might be able to take that VoIP phone with you. So um, you have to be especially knowledgeable about your contract with your VoIP provider. You have to understand what your requirements are in terms of making sure a 911 address is in the database. In a regular wireline environment, the, the carrier will input your address and it's associated with the time you set up your service. With a VoIP phone, you're required as a consumer to put in your 911 address and if your phone is able to be taken with you someplace, like maybe you take it on vacation with you or you take it uh, with you for work, then you will have to um, get online and actually put the change of address in during that period of time so that information would be available in a 911 call situation. This is not just a Minnesota issue, this is a nationwide issue and I know the Federal Communications Commission is working on this to improve location information being available for 911 dispatchers. Can you tell us a little bit more about that, Jackie? Certainly. So the FCC is concerned about the fact that we don't get uh, phase two location information or your exact location at call setup time with a 911 call 100% of the time. Um, it's important that we achieve that at some point in time in the future. Uh, obviously, this is an important endeavor. Technology-wise, it's uh, something that's going to take some time for the carriers to figure out. So the FCC has set a, a number of benchmarks over the next six years for carriers to meet. Now, in the meantime, what three things should consumers remember when they're making a 911 call from a cell phone? The first, I think, is anytime you set up brand new service, you are allowed to make a test call. You just announce that with to the 911 dispatcher, this is a test call. I've purchased new service. Make sure that the call, especially if you're using a wireless or a VoIP device for your home, uh, they will verify the address they see and make sure that that is at least somewhere close in the vicinity of where you're calling from. The second thing is you might consider keeping your landline for a home phone. 
Um, I keep one and basically that's the only reason I'm keeping it. I don't necessarily use it on a daily basis, but um, it's important because a landline phone can uh, help the dispatcher know exactly where you are even if you can't speak. And then the third thing I would always keep in mind is a, be aware of your surroundings. Help the dispatcher understand exactly where you are. Give them as much information and detail about the area, what's going on, what are some specific landmarks that might be of, you know, more dominant interest to anyone and they can find you. They're trained to handle these situations. It's obviously a challenge for them. So the, mo the more you can help them out, I would suggest staying on the line. Um, even if you can't talk, if you keep that uh, connection open, they can work with a carrier to find you as well. Jackie, some great information. Thank you for joining us here today. Thank you. And for anyone looking for more information on this topic, please go to dps.mn.gov. Thank you. That's very interesting.